すみませんお茶とお菓子を持ってきました村の特産品なんでぜひ食べてもらいたくてロイド様Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to the latest edition of Guess the Banzuke for Natsu Basho 2023. We've been gone for a few weeks. I was putting together data for a video on how effective looking at head to head records is for picking winners of fights, but right now it's too inconclusive to say much, so that'll have to wait. For now, let's talk Banzuke. Here we have the top division ranks for March along with everyone's records. As always, blue means a winning record and an expected promotion, while red means a losing record and an expected demotion. The K by Takakesho's name is there because he's now Kataban, so he'll need a winning record this time around to stay at Ozeki. Once we shift everyone around by the power of first grade arithmetic, we end up with this. I'm using Chio Tsuke's helper page for this because the guys who land on the same rank stack up nicely, so it fits on screen with the different layouts we need to go through. The two guys who matter most here are Asano Yama and Ichino Jo. Because they blew everyone out in Jurio, but Jurio promo tees are generally limited in how high they rise in Makauchi, there are several possibilities for where they end up. We can reasonably assume they won't be promoted past the guys who are above them in math, and they won't end up below the guys stuck below this gap at the bottom, but anywhere in between is theoretically possible. So, Let's start by moving everyone at the top and bottom who shouldn't be affected by King Kong and Bad Boy. These are some of the more straightforward moves, so we can talk about them pretty quickly. Kirabayama is going to move ahead of Hoshoryu. That's the guess based on basically logic and the previous Basho. Wakamoto Haru moved ahead of Kotono Waka. They were both at Komusubi, Wakamoto Haru was at Komusubi 2, Kotono Waka was at Komusubi 1 West. Waka had a better record, and they could put him ahead of Kotono Waka without Kotono Waka being moved backwards. So that's what they did. Similarly, here, Hoshoryu can get jumped by Kiri without getting bumped back himself. So logically, that's probably what they're going to do. As for Daisho and Wakamoto Haru, Daisho had 12 wins, remember? Waka had 11. A Komasubi with 11 wins generally opens up a new Sekiwake slot. Both of these guys will do that, and they should both end up at Sekiwake too. Daisho in front because he had more wins. There was a question about whether Kotono Waka was going to actually move up to Sekiwake as well if he got 11 wins. Like, would they have five Sekiwake? But he ended up with nine, so that's not something we need to worry about. Instead, Kotonowaka moves from Komasubi 1 West to 1 East with his 9 wins. He's the only Komasubi with a winning record staying at the rank, so he goes in front. Wakataka Kage gets demoted from Sekiwake with 7 wins, which means he ends up at Komasubi. And because Shodai was at Maegashira 1 with his 10 wins, he's going to open a new Sekiwake or a new Komasubi slot. That's just that's not a new thing. Like they Probably would have done that in the past, we just didn't see many instances where we would get precedent, even during the times when we would joke about how restrictive they were being with promotions. So, Waka goes to the back of the line because whoever gets demoted ends up at the bottom of the list, and we have our Sanyaku. The rest of these guys are also pretty straightforward. As we can see over here, Abi, Midori Fuji, they're the next two guys in line, so they end up here and here at Maegashira 1. Now, in the draft, I had Takayasu ahead of Tobizaru. That was just at a glance. I wasn't really thinking about it too hard. But the more you look at the last couple of Banzukes, the Joy, so the top 16 guys, Senyaku in the first few Magashira ranks, have tended to be given preference over people who were not in the Joy last time. So Tobizaru should get the tiebreaker here against Takayasu. He ends up at 2 East and Takayasu at 2 West. Endo is just all by himself here at 3, so he gets a perfect promotion from 6 to 3. And then Nishiki Fuji and Ura, because neither of them are in the joy, one thing that we've seen lately is that if there are, is a tie between guys not in the joy, whoever had the better record has generally been winning that tiebreaker. So we'll stick with that. 
We've got Nishiki Fuji going ahead of Aura. Both get over promoted, both get a pretty nice jump. And now we can go to the bottom. The bottom here is really straightforward. Kagiyaki, Oho, Mitoryu, Surugisho, they all have their own rank to sit on. There's no competition. That's easy. It's very straightforward. Ichiyamamoto and Miyogiryu are tied. Again, neither one was in the joy. Miyogiryu had the better record, so we'll bump him a little bit up. He gets a slight under demotion. Ichiyamamoto goes down seven ranks on four wins. And now we have the bottom set. Now let's have some fun. We've got to figure out where the big boys of Jiryo go. Scenario number one has us looking at this mostly by the math. So if you look here, we've got Nishiki Fuji, Ura, okay. Nishikigi, Asanoyama, and Ichinojo are all tied. Now, it's unlikely that they're going to push the Jiryo guys ahead of somebody who they're tied with by the math. So Nishikigi goes in front. Likewise, Kinbozan did extremely well, and he's only a half rank behind them by the math. It's really unlikely that they're going to put Kinbozan behind them either. So Kinbozan and Nishikigi seem pretty well set. So you can see that Ichinojo and Asanoyama are 1.5 ranks above Kota Shoho and Hokuto Fuji. More to the point, Kota Shoho and Hokuto Fuji really can't end up at ranks 5 West and 6 East. Hokuto Fuji had a losing record at 7 East. He has to stay here. He can't go anywhere. We have the white color for him because he doesn't move in this scenario. Kota Shoho at 6 West only drops a rank and a half on 6 wins. Now, one rank would be fine, but here he would only be at negative 0.5. And that is incredibly unlikely. That doesn't happen. One rank sometimes, occasionally, but half a rank, it basically doesn't happen. And he, because he wasn't way up the joy, they don't have any particular reason to give him any kind of favoritism. Uh, he fought Wakataka Kage. That was the only Sanyaku opponent he had. They're not going to be that nice to him. Then after that, you've got from Kota Shoho down to Meisei and Sadano Umi, it's another one and a half ranks. Asanoyama and Ichinojo are three ranks ahead of the next guys who could have any argument for being above them, and really not Sadano Umi, Meisei was the only one in the joy. You've got to go down another half a rank to Mitake Umi and Tamawashi before you have anyone who is fully in the joy to compete with Asanoyama and Ichinojo for these spots. That's a huge bump up or a huge bump down, depending on where you put the big boys there. And for this scenario, we're just going with the math. Even if we're making little shifts, that's way too big of a shift. That's not a little shift. So we leave Ichi and Asanoyama way, way up with a record promotion out of Jurio. The highest to date was Juri, uh, Magashira 8, but this is how the numbers work. There's really no good options for replacing them at that high level. After that, things play out pretty cleanly. So you've got Meisei and Saturno Umi here. Again, Meisei was Joy, so he will get the preference over Saturno Umi. That's what we're saying. Tamawashi, Mitake Umi, they were both into Joy. I think they're going to give Tamawashi preference. Um, even though they were both Joy, Mitake Umi had the better record. If you swap them, that's pretty much logical too, no big deal. Onisho, they could bump him down further, but again, Joy plus Injury, since they're under demoting all of the other guys coming down, I think they under demote him a little bit, so he goes there, even though Takanosho is technically ahead of him. Then Takanosho gets a nice little over promotion, Hiro Umi drops his one rank on seven wins, Takara Fuji, another nice over promotion, Hokuseiho, a slight over promotion as well, because Hokuseiho, as we see here, Hokuseiho, Daishoho, and Aoyama are all tied. Now, Aoyama, I'm breaking a rule here. I'm breaking the precedent that they've shown recently. I put Aoyama ahead of Daishoho because Daishoho and Kotoeko are next to each other. They were next to each other in rank. They both had the same record. So there's a little more logic in keeping them connected. Now, this could be wrong. They could put Daishoho up another half rank and bump Aoyama back. I don't know. Ryudin ends up really getting the ass end of this because at 2 and 13, 
that's an 11 rank drop but with those really bad records the full demotion almost never takes place and in this case it does but there's not a great way around it there is a way but we'll talk about that later and then Chiyoshoma slots in the only place you really can at this point which is 14 east and that's the whole setup but let's move on to scenario two now this scenario seems to be roughly the most popular, if not exactly Magashira 9, then in this area. Guys with 13-14 wins at Hyjurio, they have gone uh, to Magashira 8 and no higher. So if you don't think that they're going to spike these two way above what's ever happened before, which is reasonable, this is the area where you might think they'll end up. But how do you get them there? Well... You might notice that Kota Shoho hasn't moved, but Tamawashi and Matakiyumi, eh, Matakiyumi have jumped quite a bit. Here's the rationale. Kota Shoho, one and a half ranks. Down at Maegashira 6 West, that's his demotion. Matakiyumi and Tamawashi, because they're together here, they'll probably stay next to each other on the next Banzuke. If you're going to bump anyone up, if you move up Meisei and Serunoumi, even though they were ahead, then you've got Meisei on minus one rank with five wins, and Sadunoumi can't even go up that high. He would actually need to get bumped to six west, so zero demotion on six wins? Uh, there's not a chance in hell that's happening. And then Kota Shoho would have to come over here, terrible arrow, but you get what I'm saying, and end up with minus one. Minus one on six wins has happened, but like I said, that's not that common. So that doesn't really work out. Instead, what makes the most sense is you leave Kota Shoho with his under demotion, Meisei with his under demotion, Sadanomi with his under demotion. These are all very reasonable for the records and positions they had. And take the guys in the joy and bump them way, way, way up. Now, three wins from, and I checked from Maegashira 1 to 4 generally, four and a half ranks down on, on three wins, I could not find an example in the last 20 years where that happened. I did find five. So if five is the record low a demotion and we're looking for something very close to that, well, four and a half is not illogical. Three is the record uh, minimal demotion for four wins. So Mataki and me would just match that. This is a situation where that makes sense. This is a pretty logical outcome. Onisho is still getting a good under demotion for four wins, four and a half ranks, perfectly normal. And then the bottom of this all stays basically the way it did before. Nothing's changed here. This is reasonable if you think they're going to choose to significantly under demote Tamawashi and Matakiyumi in order to not give Ichinojo and Asanoyama too big of a bump. And that's pretty logical, both because they probably don't want to bump Jirio guys up way too far they don't maybe want to set that precedent and also if you look at it from their history of dealing with guys that they're you know quote unquote mad at they're not real happy with the Sanoyama but maybe a lot of them are actually kind of positive towards him because he could become a good Ozeki he could you know get back to the rank that that he held previously and maybe get back uh to where he might hit yokozuna which is what a lot of people hoped for him previously and they want to fast track him but they don't want to fast track him too much they don't want to look like they're favoring him too much and ichino joe has been a pain in their ass so they might not want to be too nice to him that would give them every reason to say all right we'll just stick you guys around magashira nine that'll be fine you'll do well deal with it this is a logical middle ground. Nothing wrong here. It's got just as much sense, just a different rationale as scenario number one. But before we get to scenario number three, let's take a look at Ryudin and what could happen in his situation. Why is he being demoted so fully when the other guys are being under demoted in these scenarios at least a little and possibly a lot? Okay, here are two examples of Maegashira 10 through 13, how they could work out. Now, obviously, this one on top is the default that we've been looking at. It's got Ryudin at minus 11. He's got his full demotion. This other one has Ryudin at Maegashira 10 East. Well, that's a big jump. What about all the spots in the middle? 
Here's why moving Ryudin up is difficult. If you move Ryudin up and bump everyone back, then Kodoeko and Daishoho go from having a half rank to zero. And as we've seen, they, they will give a guy at eight and seven no promotion in an extremely, extremely tight and restricted scenario. But this is not that. There's no reason to think they're going to deny Kotoeko and Daishoho a, a promotion when there's really no reason to. Okay, if you leave them in place, but switch him with Aoyama, then Aoyama ends up at minus four and a half ranks. They're not going to do that to a guy with six wins. Just isn't going to happen. Hokuseiho? Yeah, now you see down here, Hokuseiho is the one that gets swapped. Well, what about the other two guys? Or three guys, I should say. Takano Sho, Takara Fuji, Hiro to Umi. Well, Hiro to Umi is already at minus one with his seven wins. So he's going to stay in place. If anything, they're going to move him up. Takara Fuji and Takano Sho. So with Ryudin getting bumped to Magashira 10 East, then you've got Takano Sho coming down. He's only got his half rank. Takara Fuji drops to one. And these are the moves you can make because these are the only ones that really work. You can't reasonably drop the guys who are already only getting a half rank promotion. You can't drop Aoyama past those guys because it's too big. And you can't drop Hiro to Umi because there's really no reason. You could swap Ryudin and Hiro to Umi and just give Hiro to Umi a half rank demotion. But as we saw in the last Bonzuke, they seemed to really want seven and eight guys if they were going to be demoted to get a full rank. Plus, this doesn't really change the basic structure. The only real way you can give Ryudin not 11 ranks of demotion is to bump him way up, drop Hokuseiho way down. Are you going to see them give Ryudin a lot of favoritism just to end up with Hokuseiho, who you have to think they have a little more hope in, a major under, under promotion rather than a slight over promotion? I don't think they're going to do that. They could. They absolutely could. But I still have Ryudin with his full 11 rank decrease because I think that's the most likely outcome. However, if you think that there's no way they're going to give Ryudin a full 11 ranks, but you also don't think they're going to do Hokuseiho like that and you want an alternative, now we can get to scenario number three. And here we've got them at the absolute bottom of the pile, accepting the guys that we already moved. Maegashira 13 West and 14 East. This bumps everybody up. Once again, Tamawashi, Matakiyumi, Kota Shoho, that situation is all the same. They're still not going to give Kota Shoho, Meisei, Seru no Umi a lesser demotion than what they already are getting. So if anyone's going to end up at 5 West and 6 East, it's going to be Tamawashi and Matakiyumi. Fine. Onisho, still his decent under demotion. Now you can give Ryudin a mere six and a half rank demotion. Now, Ryudin's one of the guys that they're kind of mad at, so are they actually gonna mind dropping him a lot further? Maybe not. But if you subscribe to the idea that they're a lot more likely to be nice to guys in the joy with really bad records, this is a good scenario. Takano Sho is still getting his decent over promotion. Same with Takara Fuji. Hiro to Umi doesn't have to drop any further. They're being good to Hokuseiho. Daishoho, small over promotion. Kotoeko just gets his normal promotion. Aoyama gets his normal demotion. And remember, Hokuseiho, Daishoho, and Aoyama were all tied in, in the math. And now they can all maintain the order that is apparently preferred. Chiyoshoma gets his regular promotion. This actually works out really nicely for everybody else. The question here is, are they only going to promote these guys who we know, and they're not supposed to care about this, but who we know are much higher level than 13, 14, only that far in order to be nice to the rest of the guys on the Banzuke? I don't know, but it's got its own logic, which is this is good to everyone else. So scenario one is the most mathematical. Scenario two is the most reasonable middle ground and scenario three is well you're coming up from Jirio you just got to go where you go and we're going to be nice to everyone else first but of course this is guess the Banzuke so what is our guess for the Banzuke
It's this. This is our guess. We've got Ichinojo at 5 west and Asanayama at 6 east. There is a slight shift here. Tamawashi and Matakiyumi have both been bumped ahead of Meisei and Sadunoumi. The reason, I hope, is apparent. Meisei and Sadunoumi were only one half rank ahead of Matakiyumi and Tamawashi. But Matakiyumi and Tamawashi were joy, Sadunoumi was not, Meisei was at the ass end of it. So now he did end up fighting a lot of Sanyaku guys, but still, I don't think that's necessarily going to help him here. Tamawashi, six and a half ranks on three and 12 is pretty normal. That's a two and a half rank under demotion. That's fine. But Takayumi, minus five on four and 11, a two rank under demotion. That's fine. Meisei, four ranks on five and 10. That's a one rank under demotion. Absolutely fine. Sadunoumi, minus two and a half on six and nine. A half rank under demotion, that's okay. Own a show, five and a half, whatever. He had four, well, he was four, five, and six because of the QJOs, but that doesn't matter. Essentially, four and 11, one and a half rank under demotion. That's all fine. This all works out perfectly well. The only thing weird about this is that it's two guys from Jurio jumping the line, but it basically comes down to one question What do you do with Tamawashi and Matakiyumi? Are you willing to under demote them to the point where they're getting record setting or record tying under demotions relative to the last 20 years? They could absolutely do it. And in fact, if I had to take a guess simply at where the committee wants to put Ichino Joe and Asanayama, I think you're looking at M9 or so. I think that's the most likely attempted position for them to go. The reason I'm not picking that layout is because this is guess the bonzuke this is a game theory kind of thing i think a lot fewer people in the competition are going to move ichi and asanayama this far up which means if i'm right i'm gonna do a lot better than if i guess in the middle because i'm gonna be competing with a lot more people who made a similar guess furthermore i think this layout is top to bottom going to be why did i draw that line i think this layout is top to bottom going to be more predictable than the other ones i think with asanayama and ichino joe in the middle or at the bottom there are more positions for everyone else that can turn out differently than i think they will so if i guess one of those two options and get them right there's a better chance that i'm going to get other picks wrong and still not do that well whereas in this case I think if they put Ichi and Asanayama at the top, everything out lays out much more cleanly, much more obviously. There aren't a whole lot of different ways to do this. The Ryudin question is really the big one, and I think that's really just a 50-50. So I'm going with this. It's a game theory choice. I think there's a reasonable chance of this happening, but my other guess is really mid Maigashira. I really, really spent a long time looking at the Maigashira 13-14 option, and I was convinced it was correct for a while, but we're talking like 40, 30, 30 percentages here. It's very, very even. I wouldn't be surprised if any of them work. Hopefully though, I'm right. I get to show off. I get all the points. All the non-important fantasy competition is mine. Whew, all right, that'll do it for our guest, the Banzuki picks for Natsu Basho 2023. We'll be back in a week to see how we did in the Banzuki breakdown. So until then, have a splendid day.